So, so tell me about your first class. Now, have you had two classes or one? Two classes now. So tell me about the very first one. How did the first one go? And then it sounds like you got this chat in between and now you've done a second. So the first class, um, everybody showed up. Some people came a little late. It's kind of hard with, you know, um, parents tend to work till five o'clock. So showing up at 530 is a little bit difficult. So we didn't actually start till six. And, you know, when they first got there, they were like, so it's only six to eight. And I was like, yeah, six to eight. Or if we take a 15 minute break, then maybe 815. At 930, they weren't gone yet. They just <laughs> wanted to stay and talk. And, you know, it was very exciting because I think at first some of them were like, yeah, yeah, I'm here. And, you know, because the teacher is recommending that I do this. And um, they had like begrudgingly signed up for three Thursdays. And even after day one, they were just so excited. And by the time they showed up for the second class, they're like, we're going to come as many Thursdays as you'll do this for us. So um, it's been exciting and I, we haven't quite decided, but I thought, okay, we're going to do our three Thursdays, which I think it's going to end up being four Thursdays to get through the basic tips, the six to eight hour presentation, um, just because they are very excited. They want to practice every tool that I teach. They want to come up with stories of how something that either already occurred and how this tool would have helped them. And I'm just, I don't want to diminish their excitement. So I'm letting them share. Um, I have plans for this Thursday to kind of be like, if you have a story or a question, let's write it down. And at the end, those that can stay, you know, I'm willing to stay a little longer just because we're never going to finish if I just keep letting them. So I'm learning along as a presenter also, like stories are great and I get that you're excited and questions are great, but most of the time the answer to that question is coming so I want to make sure that um, at the end of the six to eight hour program, which for me is going to be more like 12, um, if then they still have questions or still need sp specific like one-on-one -on -one time, then that would be different. But um, so I'm learning from that. I've definitely learned that I am more prepared, like you said, than I thought I was and even though I wrote down all of these note cards, just writing them down, like it's all in there. So um, going through the PowerPoints, they love the research base. They love the little clips. You know, the empathy clip was very powerful. The, um, the um, I forgot his name, Siegel, the hand, the flip your lid. They loved that. They love that they know that the word neuroplasticity means. So um, just, it's just, I have not heard one negative thing other than, um, they've loved all of the activities. Um, the parent, the parent one that we did, the don't say don't like the interactive stuff. So the universal blueprint is overwhelming. I'm like, yes. And acknowledging, you know, that things are hard is one of the main things that one of the, you know, bonus tools that I covered right away in the beginning, because as a teacher, I know how beneficial that has been. And I know that as parents, they think they're encouraging when they tell their kids, oh, this is easy homework. You can do this. So I've been modeling that for them. You know, yes, I know how overwhelming this universal blueprint feels in class number one. Class number two, I started the class, I duplicated the slide and had it again as my, you know, second slide of the day. And I said, now that we've been through some of this, the bottom half shouldn't be overwhelming. We've covered foundation, we've covered prevention. And they were like, yes, yes. So for the third class, I plan on doing the same, having that universal blueprint, and then look at how much we've covered already. And just to kind of like that whole, we're not on cold anymore, we're working our way towards hot. Um, what I decided to do was with that class, with those group of five moms, um, we have a group chat. 
through text messages. So we call them, you know, um, improvements and opportunities. So improvements are things where they were able to be a conscious parent and noticed something that was not quite in the balance zone and fixed it right away then they would call that an improvement and they just text me like what they said or what they did. And then opportunities, mistakes are opportunities to learn. So instead of calling the mistake, we chose the word opportunities where in hindsight, they would do it different. And then to get that rewiring to happen, they tell us how they're going to do it next time. And then I tell them, practice it in your mind, you know, two or three times so that when it does happen again, you're prepared. And I just, I mean, I have at least 12 texts from the five moms with, oh my gosh, I just did this. One mom the first night was like, I've been home five minutes. I already used a tool and I already, you know, what a difference in how my child responded to me. And so I mean, it's been definitely like way better than I thought it was going to be. And okay. they've already, I was just stopped in the hallway today by um, a, a classroom assistant that said, hey, I go to church with a lady that's taking your class. She was telling us all about it on Sunday at church. I want to sign up. She said, you're starting a new one. Sign me up. So oh, awesome. I definitely feel as the word gets yep. out there, I already plan on doing another four week. I'm just going to say four weeks. Mom has cried. She cried at the second time because she said, and she does, she's, she's not as effective as the other moms. She definitely struggles. Um, she, we've definitely had to talk her through, but it was nice because as she would give examples, the other moms would be like, oh, you made it about yourself, you know, oh, wait, you did this. So we're respectfully trying to like, yes, I know you're excited, but you know, she's learning. And just the fact that, you know, she, like, I try to give her dips too, like, we're not quite there, but, um, you know, he happened to get a great score on a math test and I sent her a text. This is how your dip should sound when he comes home and tells you that he got one of the highest scores. So she told me, she sent me a text Friday after school and said, I read it word for word how you wrote it. And then <laughs> I bought him a hat as a, as a reward. <laughs> Three steps That's forward, okay. two That's steps right. back is still progress, but yeah. it's been exciting. And I think that it's going to take off. Like as, as these parents start talking, I really feel like I already have five people waiting for class number two. So, so I was telling, um, so has all these parent educators throughout the state, like not every single county, but a lot. And we were looking at the grant and where we wanted to be able to have facilitators. And so they were telling me, oh, we've got all these people here and there. And when I met with the team, like uh, there were maybe five or six people and they they were like, well, parents don't want to come. And, you know, people are referring them because they think they need the parent in class. And then the parents feel like, you know, they're being forced to come and then they don't want to be there. And 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 even their attitude was a bit like, you know, and then they come and then they're they're They don't want to be there and they don't want to, you know, whatever. And basically everything you just said is actually very common with our with our trainers that as soon as you start teaching it and they start getting results and they get excited and they want to come back and they want more hours the most common comment we get on our evaluations is that there wasn't enough time and that the class should be longer but of course if you make it longer they don't want to come so yeah so also that's where our graduate and our follow-up and going from basic to advanced that's how we ended up developing those because we knew people didn't want to sign up for it initially but once they knew what it was they wanted more so that's always something that you can do too later as you could have you know advanced for graduates or something and you could continue or your support groups or something like that you could do so, so that's, those are all possibilities for you, but um, I would love for, I told them that that was common and I would love to piece together maybe pieces of what you just said to share with some of them. Of course. Yeah. They've even said like, I, when are you doing, I'm signing up again. 
because they just want like a refresher already, yeah. you know, just to go through it. So yeah, yeah, definitely. Oh, that's um, great. I am so excited for you. I am too.